All right, um, really quickly, okay. I've been um, kind of overworking myself trying to get some of this. Yes, I'm back, yes, hi, hello. I got a new PC, so now I can actually do things. So for Lily, I think overall strategy is you mainly, you have a couple of options of approach, right? So you wanna get in, you wanna approach, you can do, but if you get into range of button, you can do button into uh, wind condor spire. All of these will lose to DI on reaction. Uh, you, you can get away with some of them, but it is reactable. See, this has, wind condor spires have three hits, which is enough to blow through a DI, but the first hit is only very short range, the second hits hit like much further away like this. So if you ever do a non-EX win Condor Spire in neutral, they can just uh... He's doing DI, right? Okay, yeah. They can just DI, and normal Condor Spires have like, you know, decent recovery, not DI reactable recovery. This is 45 frames in total. With Wind, it goes up to 51. So, six extra frames for the light one. Heavy is 53, then goes up to 59. Yeah, so six extra. This makes it significantly easier to react to the DI, and also, more importantly, you can do a late, if, if you're, um, if your Condor Spire, if your non-Wind Condor Spire hits them late enough, you can get DI'd and then ca still have counter DI uh, time, so that makes it riskier to even try to react to those. Not the case for these ones. So, if you ever do it and they can see the animation, you can get blown up. So, that makes it more difficult to do button into... Wind Condor Spire, and it makes it more difficult to do raw Wind Condor Spire in neutral, because they can react with DIs. It's not impossible, you can get away with it sometimes, but it is risky, especially if you're doing the slower, heavier version. Hmm. So the main ways you get in are Button, Drive Rush, EX Wind Condor Spire, Button EX Wind Condor Spire. Or something that is a true block string into uh, the non EX Wind. So you can do uh, DR low forward non EX Wind, and that will be a true block string. So that's how you can get in. And then, uh, all of your heavies basically also work for this. Uh, if you do your heavy into your light Condor Spire with wind, any heavy will work for this and keep it, uh, frame tight. Uh, other ways you can theoretically get in by doing forward jumping and mixing it up with Condor Dive. Wind Condor Dive is safer. And you also have air level 2, which will beat any uppercut attempt. Depending on how low you do it and which character, you can actually beat like regular anti-airs if you just go all the way down to here or something, and then you hit it, you can absolutely catch um, normal anti-airs too. But yeah, if you just jump in and just do this, it'll just absolutely eat up any DP anti-air, any uppercut, or flash kick or whatever. And this is invincible for a year. This will beat anything ever. It doesn't matter. If they do EX Flash Kick, doesn't matter. It loses. This thing wins. So those are m the main ways to get in. Other than that, your forward dash, not great. Especially for like the space that she pokes at and stuff. Hard for her to get in with that. You know, if she gets into like max command throw range or something, maybe she can get something to work. But she has a bit of a dead zone between... Um, like around this spacing and her heavy spacings. Because her heavies are good in general, but they are slow for... Other characters have moves that reach that far that are faster and more dominant in that space. 
Like uh, if Jury just does um, if Jury just does like stand heavy kick and then crouch medium kick, there's nothing you can do to interrupt it except uh, to uh, a buffer or something. So if I do this, if I try to do one of my heavies, it'll just trade. Any of my heavies will trade or lose. So I would have to poke out with a medium, but her, her medium punches are not particularly rewarding. Buffer a, or buffer a, a medium kick or something that won't even reach at that space, so you would have to commit to a buffer. Now, in general, anything that you can do to lock the opponent down. So one thing is, if you do EX Counter Spire, which is like the most easy, brain-dead, obvious, neutral winning tool, they can just drive reversal and knock you out of it. So they'll block a little tiny bit, but in general, you'll both lose two bars. Now, you will start regening your meter slightly faster than they will after doing your EX move. But in general, you're spending about the same amount of meter, but also they get the knockdown, which depending on their character, if they can get Oki off of their drive reversal, because it's universal across the cast, plus 23. Um, some of the, like, Jury can do a drive rush and a stand heavy kick all the way across the screen for, for a meaty, etc. Other characters like Jamie might take a drink after it, the knockdown. So... You wind up about even on meter, but in general, because you're the one getting knocked down, you're kind of the loser of this situation ultimately. So, you spent a win stock, and then you did... So, you want to be able to win the meter game. Now, there's a couple ways you can win the, win the meter game. The most important things to win to getting more meter than your opponent is, one, being the aggressor. If you're the one pressuring the opponent... Blocking is fucking horrible in this game. Blocking anything, ever getting locked down by your opponent and blocking stuff is just like the worst thing ever. Because you're losing drive gauge, you're at a super risky position where offense is really potent in this game and it's easy for them to open you up. And, more importantly, you're, you know, losing drive gauge, they are gaining tons. Because so long as they're the ones hitting the buttons, they're just chunking their drive gauge like crazy. It doesn't matter how much they spend, they're just getting tons of it back. So, how do you win the, the, the drive gauge race? Well, you want to be the one, e you want to be either not engaging at all, or the one hitting the opponent, or the one, you know, being in pressure. So, you want to be able to play defensively in such a way that you can use some of these unique defensive tools, like neutral jump, uh, condor dive, or bait them into coming closer with this. Uh, Lily is pretty good if the opponent is chasing her, because then she gets to do a lot of the- Like, doing this, you know, you can space these out to be- To be plus on block, the non-win versions, and in fact, even the win versions. Like, if I do heavy this, it can get drive impacted, or drive reversaled. But if I do it from back here, if you space it out, it actually can't. Um, but, that being said, it's much harder to space these if they're moving away from you than they are if, if they're moving towards you. Because they're quite bad on whiff. If you misjudge the spacing by them being too far, that's very bad for you. If you misjudge the spacing by them being too close, it's much more likely that they'll run into your attacks. So, this, I think, is only valuable as a tool to use against the opponent if they are trying to chase you down. So this, I, I see this as a defensive neutral tool. Same way as I see this, and most of her heavies. Her heavies, they have decent range for their speed, and they can do a lot of good stuff, but they are not that dominant in footsies because their speed for their range just means that the opponent can just walk in and out of the range very easily. Anyone with any halfway decent walk speed and about the same range of their attacks, which a lot of characters have, similarly ranged attacks, like Jamie's heavy kick would reach this far. Um, yeah, uh, everyone else can just kind of walk in and easily outwalk. So it's very hard for you to walk up and then land crouching heavy, heavy punch and have them not walk out of it if they're trying to walk backwards. So 
these buttons are only particularly good if the opponent's trying to aggress you in footsies instead of, like, you trying to aggress the opponent. So, you can bait them. I think the general strategy with Lily is just generate meter by being a fucking asshole. Just build tons of meter, do this all the time, do the heavy version, and then if they start to approach, just let go of the attack, etc. Just completely, shamelessly build meter stocks off of this. Do the light version so that you can bait it out. Hmm. Right, so, um... Yeah, I think these tools are mainly good for playing on the defensive end. Um, this poke is like, you know, her stand medium punch is one of the most important pokes because it's the only thing that its range plus its speed actually makes it okay in footsies. And it's like, if you only rely on your heavies, it's very easy for them to just outspace your attacks and whiff punish you. So you actually have to use medium punch. Not because it's even rewarding, but it's just like the only thing that they can't walk out of so easily. But beyond that, you're mainly playing for just shamelessly generating those win stocks, which you can get pretty easily because the fact that you have this attack follow-up and the fact that you can just do this and then counter DI and do all this stupid crap, people, just human beings, by the, players by their nature, psychologically, don't like taking gambles, even if the odds are technically in their favor, they don't like... Fighting game players like to have a relatively safe option and then maybe a risky option. They don't like to choose between two risky options. So even if the odds are technically in their favor. So... People will just, like, like a deer in headlights, let you fucking win stock if you're just being really blatant about it. There's so many places where you can just steal win stocks. So I don't think generating wind is a problem for the character. I think, like, you do this, and this is how you also psychologically bait them into approaching you, because it's a bit harder for her to approach them, unless she has tons of meter. If she has tons of meter, then she can start all of her offense shit. So once you are in the close range, you don't need meter to apply offense. Once you are here, then you can just do... You can just loop wind and create all the frame traps and constantly threaten with command grab and you have tons of tools at your disposal that you don't need to spend meter and you can get tons of corner carry even on block and build tons of your meter back. So you want to have a lot of... But it's like getting from neutral to that position, that close range, that is the problem. So as I was talking about, your main ways of getting in are... Uh, so, okay. First of all, you have some ways of getting in that, uh, if you mix up between EX and maybe do a couple of non-EX ones, it'll be much harder for them to react to the non-EX ones with a drive impact. But they will still be able to drive, uh, reversal these. Unless they are properly spaced, which is a bit difficult to do if you're trying to chase the opponent. However, you also have ways of getting in that do not necess that do not leave yourself open to a free, a guaranteed drive impact spot. And technically, you can you can like stop the 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 drive the drive reversal with level two, but it is a hard call out, and you know, take the risk at your own peril. But you can make it not free for them. And she does get Oki off of this. She, she is super plus. It's full screen, but she's plus 44. She can easily drive rush in or get more wind or whatever. But anyways, beyond hard callouts like that, you can also do any time that you're in range to crouching heavy punch. Okay, so here's one thing. If you have no wind... So if you have wind, all of these lose to DI. However, if you have no wind, 
you can do the light one, still be able to counter DI. It is a frame trap if you do it like this, and it will be plus on block. You can be anywhere from zero to plus two if you space it properly. Um, as for her offensive sequences, right, so, yeah, you can do, and I've seen some Master Rank Lily players that play like this, where they just stay at low wind most of the time, and just do a lot of that. I am skeptical, because you still, this is not the best footsies tool, you're not gonna be able to lock them down that frequently, and most importantly, I think it's very important for Lily to have at least one wind in case things start to go against her. Because, like we were talking about with that situation with, like, Jury, and just tons of situations where there's a mid-range where her footsies buttons are not good. So in this, you would either ha you would have to just commit to something that doesn't even reach and just buffer it. Or, do your god button, EX Condor Spire, which is your actual best mid-range footsies tool. Like, it, it, yeah, it will go from full screen into plus frames, but it's actually strongest right here. Because it is a 9 frame... Like, it reaches this far in 9 frames. This far in 9 frames. So, this is just EX Chariot Tackle, but it's also plus on block. This is fucking stupid. This move just is the ultimate fuck you, get off me, stop pressing buttons on me footsies tool. So yeah, I do think it's very important for her to have wind on her most of the time, just in case she needs to use that in the close range. And there's not a good way of beating it, like, because it's also safe to DI. So it's just like, it's such a safe, like just very comfortingly safe tool to have in this mid range. Um, but yes, anyways, how she gets in. One, if she, if she does any of her drive rush heavies or, um, like, crouch medium kick or something into a non-EX counter spire, then she can end up meter positive because she spent one bar on the drive rush, but they have to spend two bars on the drive reversal, not including the little bit of chip damage they took from blocking the things in the first place. Especially if it's off of a heavy. So yeah, that, or about that, like half a bar, minus two bars, and you are sitting at like, ha only half a bar spent in total, that's like a huge meter benefit there. Next is the things that you actually want to be able to do, which is the situations where they can't, they don't have a very easy, obvious, simple, guaranteed spot to drive reversal. So if you ever land... Any of these heavies, you can drive rush and you will be safe to... It, you're so plus that you will be safe to their uh, 6 frame EXDPs. So you're safe on that one. Safe on that one. Safe on that one. Which means that you can bait out EX, which means that because you have the threat of being able to bait it out, you can do whatever you want. You can go all the way up for command throw off of any of these. Although the best one is definitely Crouch Fierce. Forward Heavy Punch is also very good, but it's like, you know, harder to use in footsies. The most obvious one is Crouch Fierce. Go all the way up for normal throws, and she does get Oki off of both of her normal throws, forward and back. If she does this, she can dry rush all the way up for a... a uh, Crouch Fierce. And then she can do that into the light. If she has no wind, she can do it into that, and keep it as a frame trap, and there's no... Well, they, they can guarantee drive reversal the Crouch Heavy Punch, but again, it's like... They can't just drive reversal everything, because they will run out of meter. So long as Lily is meter positive in these interactions where they have to drive reversal, then she is basically winning. That's her goal. She wants to starve them out of so much meter that they can't get her off of them anymore. So yeah, she gets guaranteed Oki off of this. 
Um, off of back throw. She's very plus. She's like plus 32, which is even more than her command throw. So she can get full screen Oki like that. If I didn't mention it already, if you can ever manage in footsies to get them to block forward heavy punch, you can then go straight into one of your 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 Condor Spires your, without having to do the EX. You know, there's no gap that they can drive impact. If you're like if you're super max max range for forward heavy punch, you can you can only safely do it into the light Condor Spire. But if you're any closer, you can go into the heavy and still keep it a true block string. It just has to be close enough for the first hit to of the Condor Spire to reach, and then you can get um, more corner carry on block. Another thing about doing these dry rushes off of these heavies is that you can usually, off of like forward heavy punch, back heavy punch in, and well, all the ones that are good for it, you can create auto true frame traps with uh, dry rush and back heavy punch. And also, if the opponent is like, technically, you can guaranteed block, you can block this and then guaranteed drive reversal on reaction. You can block this, guaranteed drive reversal on reaction. But assuming the average player against Lily is only really thinking to drive reversal on these big obvious Condor Spires that they don't want to block. Let's say, here, let me switch to Lily. Let me demonstrate this process and the eventual amount of meter. So if we do that, three bars for the uh, Drive Rush cancel. And if we Drive Rush, uh, we Drive Rush at that point, we are in the lead. The attacker is in the lead. Lily, um... Drained more on block slash regenerated more through her block strings and then the last two bars that they spent means that they are now a bar behind Once they drive reversal at that point You can also do that that's also a decent way to do it and medium kick is not guaranteed drive reversalable unlike heavy uh, back heavy punch You knew that that'll keep it kind of even on meter once they drive reversal the uh, the spire. Anyways, the main value of this is that any meter that you spend getting in is probably worth it because if they don't keep drive reversaling you, as soon as you're in, all you need is win to be able to keep the offense going. And also more importantly, any meter that you spend getting into this mix point, if you ever land any of your strikes, let's say you uh, you know they uh. Lock one, and then you get, like... You end up uh, generating quite a bit of your meter back, especially on the block string afterwards. Especially, especially if you land your command throw. Then you build, like, basically a full bar back over the whole animation. Now, as for her drive rush options, like, say, do her one bar stuff of doing, like, drive rush into a heavy into light, uh, spire, wind spire, uh, for a true block string, the main risk of doing your drive rush stuff is raw drive rush from, from Lily means a couple of things, so she's quite susceptible for her big heavies to get jumped over. As soon as, as soon as they see the green flash, they can neutral jump a lot of the time. Uh, all of her heavies have this problem. Crouch heavy is 37 frames in total. Back fierce uh, uh, and stand fierce are 35. And then forward fierce is a joke. Super long startup, tons of recovery, no active frames. And it doesn't hit as high into the air as you would think. In fact, none of her buttons hit as high into the air as you would think. Only the first hit of this as the anti-air, which doesn't really help or mean anything in footsies. It won't catch people at a jump startup. Nothing she does will catch people at a jump startup most of the time. So, you know, very important to do those full 
jump medium punch target combo um, punishes on people jumping. Very important to a uh, your block reversal forward jump after. So let's say you do like a block string, and you try to crouching heavy punch right to keep him down. Then you're leaving yourself open at that point. That's just a punish. All of your heavies fail here. Stand medium punch fails. Crouch medium punch fails. Everything fails. Everything fucking sucks. All of her buttons very jumpable on the ground. And all of her heavies leave her quite open to aerial approaches. Forward jumps and neutral jumps. So, you definitely need to, like, and also, depending on which jump in button they use, it can be a, a sticky situation. If they empty, j if they, if they do jump in with a button, you can juggle them with Crouch Fierce as the anti-air. But if they don't jump in with a button, it'll just air reset them. And if you committed canceling this button, expecting them to do anything, you're just pun you're just killing yourself. You cancel it into this, you're just dead. Even if you hold it down, you'll just get DI'd. Unless you try to gimmick it out. <laughs> with that, which is still punishable. The only thing you can do is if you have no no wind, you can do <sighs> Yeah, but even then that doesn't work if you're too close. If you're far, if you anti-air from further away, you can do crouch fierce into this. Sometimes, if you yeah, like that to get it meaty. Even then, that has its own risks and problems. So yeah, kind of a shitty situation. Which is why it's so vitally important to at least sometimes just fucking murder them with a full jump medium punch combo. So anyways, main things are if you drive rush into any heavy, you are opening yourself up to a jump. If you drive rush into one of her mediums, you can poke but still be able to anti-air. Um, so... Her medium punches, you can't cancel in anything, so I would do Drive Rush, Medium Kick, and Crouch Medium Kick. If I'm playing in Modern, I only have Crouch Medium Kick, so I would do that most of the time. And if it makes contact, then I can cancel into the, the wind thing, and that's fine by me. And if they jumped over it, if they jumped over this, I have plenty of time to anti-air. It's also not a terrible hitbox, uh, either of her medium kicks. Crouching medium kick goes a bit further when done on a drive rush, but stand medium kick is more plus on hit and block and has some other benefits. You can also go into jab just to like catch a buffer, like you can buffer her jab into this, and or you can buffer her stand light kick into this or anything. Just do a button into into waiting without having to go all the way forwards like this. And then you can see the jumps and anti-air them, especially you want to anti-air them hard to discourage them from doing it, so anti-air them with that jumping medium punch a lot of the time. Uh, depending on your spacing, you can come at it with this, and even if they neutral jump, you're too far away for them to reach you, generally, except for like JP with his really super long jump button. Uh... And Lily would obviously be able to Condor dive it on reaction. You can also do this. Um, if you're properly spaced out, it's not too bad to back jumping and sometimes, but it can also be risky to forward jumping. Which is why you have to, you know, mix in these options that allow you to anti-air. And as soon as you, but then you have options that lose to drive impact, right? So. So these moves, you have some drive rush options. Most of her heavy punches will lose to drive impact. So as soon as 
as soon as you drive rush, they can react it and hit drive impact in expectation of what you'll do, and it'll hit all of her heavies. The only difference is, if you do crouching heavy punch, if they drive impact into it, the uh, crouching heavy punch will trigger on both hits, because the drive impact will go into its first hit, which will allow you to recognize it and or option select it. You could, I, I believe I have an option select on here already to demonstrate, and you can counter the DI like that. Or if you're already committing to drive rush canceling the button anyways, then you'll be able to deal with the, the, the DI. However, if you DI into this, into just like light wind stock, it depends on which button you use it from. Here, let me, let me test it. Yeah. It will be tough to get it at a timing where it will beat the DI. DI will usually win, unless you do the full EX. Which I don't think is worth it. At that point, at that point, just fucking drive rush. Because then you'll get way more offense that's way harder for them to stop. And you have plenty of opportunities to get your meter back. And you'll be able to punish their DI way harder if they did DI you. So yeah, that's my opinion. So, the medium kick routes, doing medium kick, drive rush medium kick into windstock is good. But this will still lose to DI. It'll, you'll be able to deal with the jumps and stuff. It'll still lose to DI. So you'll also need to rotate in options that beat DI, namely Crouch Fierce, and you just lighter buttons, button into Dry Rush, etc. And then after that, like, I believe, like, that's, like, if you're really dedicated and shameless about just following these ideas and tenants to the letter, I think that Lily can be incredibly obnoxious and just, like, maul people. Just rotating between these options such so that you're not running into anything that hard counters what she's doing. You have enough approach options that you can deal with all of the various things they could do to counter her approach options, like neutral jumping on reaction to DR, neutral jumping in anticipation of EX counter spire, um, etc. I especially like playing in Modern with Lily for a number of reasons. It's not just one button supers and one button DP. It's also um, having one button command grab. It makes it easier to slide the extra rest of the way in a way that you can't do with a manual input because then you would have to, as soon as you start the manual input, your momentum stops. That being said, I don't think that's particularly powerful. The main things, I think, is being able to do this one button, both defensively and offensively, because if you walk forwards to chase, like, a projectile character, and then you see them do a projectile and you try to input that input the uh, EX counter spire, you'll just get this fucking DP, because the input system is so bad. The input system... But if you if you play in modern, it's a completely different input. You just hit... You see... You wa you're walking forwards and you see a projectile, you just hit, you just hit auto and down with the special input. There's no accidental miss inputs you can get. So having this as a one button, also very helpful.